How you doing, YouTube? Matt Massa Beer Reviews back with Beer Mail Unboxing. Yes, a little bit of Beer Mail Unboxing on a fine Tuesday evening. Never hurt anybody, especially this guy. Um, in this sweet, delicious box of hopeful goodness comes courtesy of someone that doesn't need any introduction. That would be Steven. Uh, yeah, he is Beer Man, Beer Mailing extraordinaire. Um, he sent me multiple beer mails over the past years. <laughs> that's how crazy it is. And, uh, he just started sending beer mails to some other beer tubers. So that's pretty cool. Um, but this, this landed today. I knew it was coming only not because he told me because I could see it incoming on my, uh, on my, uh, my FedEx delivery inbound. And, uh, I didn't know, I didn't know if I was going to get this beer mail today, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, why? Because I basically just beat the shit out of FedEx for about four days, um, over the phone about stuff. So I had this mail coming in. I, was, I, I bought myself a PlayStation five. <laughs> okay. And, uh, I wanted to play with it and, um, it got delayed in Texas cause it came out of Texas. I bought it from GameStop. And, uh, which is fine. I don't mind it being delayed from Texas. I was like, yeah, fine, whatever. I was like, it got delayed. It is what it is. It's Texas. I'd rather people live than me get my PlayStation, you know, very thin line. But, um, so anyway, uh, so it starts back chugging along, along its route and it's supposed to be delivered Friday. I was like, cool, perfect for the weekend. I get to mess with my PlayStation. Nothing. No delivery attempts. I was like, okay, that's weird. Whatever. They'll deliver it on Saturday. Saturday rolls around. I was like, okay. Nothing. I get a thing pop up in my uh, my notification saying uh, your package has been scheduled for Tuesday because you requested a specific day for someone to pick it up. And that just kind of got me really pissed because I was like, I did not choose that. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, I don't know why the, this and, and this is an ongoing thing in my community with FedEx. For some reason, over the past few months, they must have got a different driver um, and uh it was a different driver and it just screwing everything up. You know what I mean? So I was like, okay, that's not cool. So I call him like, listen, I was like, you know, it was supposed to be delivered yesterday. They didn't even try today. They didn't try. And they marked it that I want it delivered on Tuesday. I don't want it delivered on Tuesday. I'm like, what can I do? Blah, blah, blah. Get all frustrated. I was like, come on, you gotta be able to do something for me. And they're like, hold on. They're like, I'm talking to the dispatch now, which I have the direct number to fix. That's how bad they are. But I called the 1-800 number first. Cause I know, it sucks when people call direct. Anyway, and they're like, I'll send a message to them, see what they say. And I was like, okay. And they're like, well, the person, Kathy, who I actually know from the distribution center um, from dealing with it previously. And she's like, she's going to, she's going to pull it. She wants to know if you'll definitely come by tomorrow. And this is Sunday. It's an hour and a half round trip for me, but I want to play with it because I'm one of those people. And I was like, like, we can't deliver it tomorrow, even though we get deliveries on Sundays, we can't deliver it tomorrow. But she says, if you tell, if you promise her that you'll be here between 10 a.m. or 8 a.m. and 10 a.m., we'll pull it off the truck and have it ready for you for to pick up. I said, fine, I'll relent. This sucks. Whatever. I'll do it. You know, wake up in the morning, watch my Jeopardies, me and the wife. We keep the Jeopardies kind of kind of kind of saved for the weekend. Watch my Jeopardies, have my coffee, get in the road, drive the 40 minutes to the place, go in there. The guy's like, okay packages blah, blah, blah. He comes back out he's like you know what we forgot to take him off the truck we can't get him to you till uh monday now i'm like really dude i was like really i was like really dude i was like really i'm like i understand it's late and it's late and i understand i don't care whatever it's frustrating but you told me to come here you told me to come here and you said please make sure you come between eight and ten because we're gonna pull it off the truck so you can uh so you can uh so you can get it and and i was like okay and they're like you you promise you'll be here i'm like yeah i'll definitely come i mean my wife's pregnant if she goes into labor that's the only reason i'm not coming and they're like okay so okay you're definitely coming we'll pull it off the truck and then it's like yeah we forgot you have to go home now so i was like okay that's not cool so i was like okay I'm like at this point i'm just pissed and i'm like i know i'm not getting it today I'm like that sucks I'm like, but can you at least give me somebody's name I can call so I can get somebody in trouble? Because somebody needs to be reprimanded. Not that I'm going to be like a, a super male Karen or anything like that, but I figured, you know, the package is already a week and a half late. Tax is fine. Not missed two days. And then told me to come drive at 40 minutes to go get it. And they said, oops, sorry, we forgot to take it off the truck and we can't go get it for you right now. So um, lo and behold, about an hour after I got home, 
they called and said, hey, we're just going to we're, we're putting on a truck for delivery today. So I ended up getting on Sunday. But this came today. How about that for a lead in for a beer mail? And I was like, OK, how is this going to be delivered? <laughs> I was like, is this dude going to chuck it out of the truck like as far as he can into my snow banks? And that's pretty much what happened. Um, I got, I, I wish I had my cam, my phone, phone's right there. I can't grab it. Um, but I, like, it was like literally. I'm, I'm now granted this one. I'll let them slide on because my driveway didn't get plowed today because the plow guy was out of town, so it screwed up. It was like this much snow, but I get it. I, you know, or, or, the Amazon person walked my front door. The UPS person walked my front door. The FedEx guy doesn't want to walk to my front door. But don't throw it in the snow bank. They throw it in a fucking snow bank. Anyway, it's alive and well. We're going to dive into it. Let's get in the comments real quick before I start opening this fucker up. Um, Mike Gibson says, what games you playing? I pick mine up on Sunday. Um, honestly, there's really, I mean, that's the thing. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm a slave to tech, so there's really not much to play, brother. You know, I'm playing Morales, my, uh, Miles Morales. Um, I like the first Superman really, or Superman, Spider-Man didn't really do it much, do much for me. But there's something about this one that I actually like quite a little bit more. Um, I saw, maybe it's a little bit more fluid in the gameplay or maybe it's a little easier. I don't know. So I've been playing that. I am actually, uh, I'm looking forward to replaying some PlayStation f uh, four games on it. Some of the remastered stuff, the uncharted of the world. I'm strictly a offline single player story guy. I like Bioshock. I like metal gear. I like uncharted. I like those kind of games. Infamous. Yada, yada, yada. So I've been playing, I'll, I'll want to go through, maybe I'm going to pick up guard of war again because I played halfway through that and kind of stopped from it. So just to see the resolution boost and the frame rate boost, I have a, I have a, a 4k projector. So I have like a hundred, uh, 110 screen in my basement. Um, and that's what I game on. Um, so I like, I like fidelity over frame rate, but to get the combination of two is quite nice. Like I have a gaming PC. I have a, a Ryzen 3900 X with a 2080 super. So I'm pretty good when it comes to that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, yeah. We are going to, uh, we're going to see that soon enough. Now, let's do this. Go to the other comments. Why am I doing that? Why is that doing that? Why is that? Where did it go? Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, bah, 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 bah. Uh, so, Steve's Brink Channel says, good evening, mate. Uh, how lucky you and lucky for some to have a PS4, a PS5. Uh, uh, yeah, man. Very lucky for some. Uh, I tried, I've been trying to get one since day one, and I, I've had no luck. No luck whatsoever. I've got it in the card a couple times at like Best Buy and shit like that, and I just couldn't get one. Uh, but I um, this last time when GameStop released, it was a bundle, so it was kind of expensive. Uh, but I didn't mind it because you can return stuff from GameStop. Um, you actually get money back. Um, and uh, and uh, I tried and tried and tried and tried and tried, and it, it just couldn't do it again. I was like, okay, I'm done. This sucks. I'm not going to get it. And then, like, I waited 15 minutes, and I, something popped up on my Twitter. Like, I have alerts set up for trying to get them. And they're like, something's messed up with GameStop. Keep trying, because eventually, and I think everybody else gave up, because when I went back, the first time I clicked Add to Cart, Checkout, Number, Done. I was like, wow, how did that fucking happen? So, yeah, I got lucky that time. Uh, I've been waiting for the PS5 Slim to come out, because uh, all the bugs and stuff will be sorted by then. I've never been a big subscriber to that. I've had the PlayStation 3 and the PlayStation 4 at launch, and I've never really exhibited it had any kind of bugs. The only bug I had was the yellow light of death, actually. Uh, actually, no, I never had a yellow light of death. I never did. And I bought the launch backwards compatible PlayStation 3, the 60 gigabyte. I never had it. I sold it years later for like a premium because people coveted them probably about several years ago, but um, ended up buying a slim and that was fine. Or the, the slimmer one, not the super slim one. Um, but I don't I don't mind that. Plus, it's, you know, it's got a warranty and shit. It is what it is. So, um, Especially how they're built now. With has so much emphasis put on heat. I don't mind it. Mark Van Zeeland chiming in saying, hey. He's like, that sucks. You should complain and maybe get a refund. Nah, nah I'm not going to get a refund. I didn't pay for shipping. Um, you know, it is what it is. I just want people to do their fucking jobs. You know, I don't want to get people in trouble. Uh, like I said, I don't want to complain and just be an asshole just for sake of being an asshole, but that's a little egregious. So um, FedEx, that's where my best friend works for Netherlands. And here's the thing. FedEx almost exclusively are pretty damn good. 
Um, for those that don't know, uh, UPS in the United States, at least, as far as, uh, well, I, I know it's that way in the States. I don't know outside of the United States. But uh, UPS in the United States is a company. Like, you work for UPS, you drive the trucks, you deliver the packages for the company. And FedEx is kind of like McDonald's. You actually buy territory. You franchise out of the territory. And then what you do is you then you buy trucks, and then you employ people to drive for you in the territory that you purchase from FedEx. So it's, it's a different company. Now, with that mindset, that you in which makes sense typically they're a much better delivery service because there's culpability it's not like you can hide behind a big huge corporate person uh you know if your route's fucked up they get complained even the owner gets shit on uh sort of tends to be a little bit more kind of checks and balances when it comes to that but for some reason my area just has been horseshit um and mark saying i'm waiting for demus to tell which one man i think i posted a bunch of them didn't i oh no i didn't did i I don't think I did. No, I didn't. I'll tell you what, dude. Not tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Because tomorrow is um, Homebrew Wednesday. But Thursday, you'll see two, the Mustretel, I believe that I'm pronouncing that horribly. You'll see the ones. you see a couple of, there's a one yellow and black hand. That one, um, uh, Douglas from Douglas Beer Reviews. Go check him out. Oh, I'm Dutch dude. Uh, we're all going to do that one together. A bunch of us going to do it together. So you have to wait on that one. But the other two, the one with the wrench on front, the one with the, like, the little He-Man dude on it and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, so we'll check to see if I actually did post them. I don't believe I did. No, I know I didn't post them. I posted a, a mystery beer review from the uh, Netherlands. That's what I'm thinking of. Oh, and that you're saying about making M M MGS one, but they are rumors. Yeah. Eh, we'll see. I mean, there's some really good, um, there's some really good. So metal gear solid one, this turned into a video game podcast, uh, metal gear solid in, in a shipping a logistics podcast. Um, so Metal Gear Solid 1 got remade on GameCube for as Twin Snakes. Not a lot of people like them because there are some cutscenes uh, to it uh, that are a little bit over the top. I don't mind it, and I think it's a really good port, and you can get that actually produced at like 720p natively um, out of that, and you could actually run it via Dolphin or an emulator on a computer, so you don't necessarily need to go out and get a GameCube, and the, and the fidelity on that is quite nice. There's also, if you just type in a Metal Gear Solid 1 texture, remake or whatever and, and there's a google thread it's quite old but someone actually rewrote um and retextured metal gear from the ground up for the computer the computer port um and it's really pretty and it plays really really well so there's ways to get that really nice well done kind of thing now if you're talking about remaking completely i assume you're doing like an hd thing but either way more metal gear more old school metal gear so before i go in this crazy two tangent of video game shit i love single player on the rails with a little bit of variance 30 hour done video games and that shit's becoming a dodo bird nobody makes those games anymore those are the games that i love those are the games i love i love and even metal gear metal gear's turned into open world coming to rpg level shit now with metal gear solid phantom pain i played that stuff it's fine um but i don't like it you know what i mean uncharted that's probably the, one of the only franchises that's still kind of leaning into that heavy single player mode um, all these other games are turning into RPGs and shit that I don't like. I hate that shit. So hopefully that's not the case. Learn experience, but I find UPS more reliable than FedEx. More often than not, I think that's the opposite. Now for beer, it might be a little bit different, but yeah, for me, honestly, I think you might be getting karma for doubting Tom Brady. No, because I mean, Tom Brady has so much like karma to make up for all the cheating he's done over the years. I don't think I'd get in trouble for doubting someone who's been such an overt and heinous cheater. You know what I mean? Like it's like it's like it's like would I get would I, if I doubted Hitler would they get would they get angry at me then karma? No, you just fucking it's Tom Brady, he's a piece of shit. Anyway, so I'm nice. Oh man, okay, let's dive into this beer review or box unboxing, I should say. Maybe we'll do a beer review out of this box. I don't know. It's been sitting in a stove bank for several hours. It's definitely cold enough. <laughs> and that's the other part is like, what am I gonna do? Complain to FedEx? How dare you throw my illegal beer mail that is not supposed to be shipped? Via your service and leave it in the snowbank. Don't you know it could have frozen? Once illegal is a bad word. Outside of policy, I guess you would say. So, anyway. Ooh, banging my mic everywhere. There's like, oh, god damn it. 
Steven's, Steven's, he's just a maniac. It's packed with foam. Just some kind of foam going on here. Okay, buddy. Okay. I think we're still good. Hopefully my mic's still working. So, packing peanuts. If you don't put packing peanuts in there, you don't hate me enough. Um, and that's a good thing. Okay. We're just going to do what we can here as far as uh, picking out... Uh, you know, can so this comes from his buddy's brewery. Oh, we have Tom Slew saying <laughs> laughing at my Tom Brady comment. Tom Broderick, Tim Broderick, sorry, chiming in saying cheers, Matt. Uh, this is from Phantom Brewing, and this is his buddy's brewery. Um, the last ones he sent to me were sour beers, and this one is a sour IPA, it's a blueberry peach graham cracker, 5.7% IPA. It's a little Grim Reaper dude taking a selfie. So, there you go. My mouth is now. I need to drink something. There's the, there's the man, man of the hour as we speak. Doing the unboxing. What's going on, homie? It's already been a 15-minute unboxing, and I didn't even fucking bring out more than one beer yet. Um, Rhino Puff says, how does beer shipping beer actually work in regards to law? Legal? Question mark. It's against individual company policy. So it, it pretty much varies from state to state. Different states have different rules as far as whether or not you can ship beers into their state. It's not a federally blanketed, you can't do it thing. It's do you, there's a, there's a company policy that it's against the, against their policy to ship alcohol for USPS. Since that's the government owned entity that technically makes it illegal. Cause you're breaking one of their rules in their government. Um, but, I have breweries send me beer from USPS all the time. Um, and FedEx and uh, UPS will ship alcohol, but you have to send it a specific exact way. Like you have to pay for, you have to pay extra. Like when I get beer, when I get beer mails from breweries, um, especially the bigger ones. So like, you know, the Lagunitas and Sierra Nevadas of the world, those kind of breweries, they're always legit. You know what I mean? They have like, they'll have stamped on the outside, like, contains alcohol do not deliver to someone under under 21 so you can do it in in jersey here it's very very um it's very strict for shipping beer into new jersey but i get those beer mails because it's like it's like it's a it's like a, a, a rider on their contract that they're allowed to do it um but it's like you're talking about sending a beer mail this probably I'm, i mean this is a big heavy box so i couldn't venture a guess um, but I'm guessing this box probably costs Steven a pretty penny to ship, probably upwards of 30, 40 bucks. I would say if just shipping alone, mind you. Um, but I'm saying if if he had to do it legitimately and uh and uh get all the the I's and T's dot and crossed, it'd probably be upwards of a hundred dollars. So it's not viable to do it that way. Make me knock shit over. Okay, let's move on. We'll, we'll save that one for a little bit later, and we'll just uh, pick another can out. Mystery beer. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Let's see. We got a little bit of treehouse here. A little quadruple shot up here. Yeah, so there you go. Just a little bit of shelfies. A little bit of quadruple shot shelfie. Uh, quadruple shot dark. Um, it says here, for the batch of quadruple shot, the Treehouse Coffee team crafted a custom dark roast coffee utilized aggressively. It has resulted in the most intense and delicious coffee stout we may have made to date. It's outrageous. 11.2% alcohol by volume. Dig the label. I'm a sucker for the gold on black. This is that light gray on black. Very similar. Um, what else we got here? Oh, come on, baby. Actually, let's do this. Let's throw that over there. Oh, it's a box in a box. I love when he sends boxes and boxes. Ugh. Why am I having a hard time doing this? I have scissors. Why am I being an asshole? Well, I'm an asshole usually, but you know what? Here. There we go. Oh, come to pap. Warmth. A little bit more treehouse jams up in this piece. Man, they're hitting it hard with the bottles, aren't they? Um, font's getting small, though, so old guys can't read it. Uh, warmth is our take on a Belgian style quad. Oh, <laughs> fuck yeah, dude. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> I don't even want to say now because I love Belgian quads. An homage to the style that we are deeply in love with, primarily for being responsible for kicking off our own pursuit of beer. Pouring dark ruby color in glass. Uh, warmth is beautiful and uh, effervescent. We taste burnt sugar, dark cherries, raisins, plums, sweet cola, dark fruits, Belgian yeast, and mixed spices. We invite you to enjoy cool store 
enjoy it cool or sort of envi cold environment for many years to come. A Belgian quad. This might be the most giddiest beer I've ever received. I'm. They basically said exactly what I feel when it comes to Belgian beers, which is that's how I got into beer. So there's a, a special warm, warm, get it? warm place in my heart for for Belgian quad. So uh, yeah. Anyway, okay. So let's take this out. There's no, another thing in here I couldn't get out. Let's see if we can get it out here. Oh, bag of peanuts. Appreciate it, brother. There we go. There we go. Um, uh, Kyle, do you hate on breweries that have hopped on the hard seltzer trade? Not really, man. Um, you know, I would sit here and get all high and mighty over it and kind of be like, you know, this is this, this is that, but especially during pandemic times, I'm not going to fucking, I'm not going to get too hot and bothered over people doing it. You know, whatever keeps people, uh, who barrel aged beer, it's got to be barrel aged beer. It's got wax on it. I'm assuming it's an imperial style brew with cocoa nibs. Peanut butter, vanilla, and lactose. 10% ABV. It's from his buddy's brewery. I don't believe it's barely. It just got fancy wax on it. So, yeah. I'm digging it. Let's see if we can balance it up there. Hopefully, no. I'm going to break that shit if I do that. Um, so, yeah. I, I don't hate on people doing a seltzer thing. If that gets them through the pandemic, then more power to them. I wouldn't sit here and say, like, I'm like, ooh, cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it is what it is. Um, if you like 30-hour games... Either The Witcher, Horizon, uh, Zero Dawn, if you played it. Apologies, man. Um, I saw you on live with Ke uh, Kent. Craig, yeah, Craig's awesome, dude. Uh, Craig's awesome, dude. You see, that's the thing, though. Witcher, and to me, Witcher and Horizon Dawn are like 80-hour games. You know what I mean? Like, at, at least the way I play them. They're a little bit... I really like Horizon Zero Dawn. I started playing it. I moved away from it a little bit. And then... They, and then I just, I'm waiting. I don't know why I'm waiting to go back. Honestly, I want to play it again, but I'm waiting to go back. Witcher is way too RPG level stuff for me. Um, way too many. Anything that asks you, do you want to, you like, anytime you play a game and it has, like, a question, and then you have to give, like, you have to ask, like, nine, like, says something, you have to ask, like, this, 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 and this. And then it's like, okay, you ask this, 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 and this, and this. Do you want to ask this, this, and this? No. No. No, that's a cutscene to me. I don't want to fuck with that shit. Just say what I need. Tell me what I need to know. Anyway. Yeah, what can I say? Um, let's see. Uh, Steve's Brewing Channel added you. Well, cheers, brother. I'll get back. Uh, I had a box with brown liquid break recently, so I'm overdoing my pack of materials now. <laughs> uh, okay, fair enough. Uh, any hazy I should be trying in South Jersey? I don't know. The seed? Uh, the seed just opened there in Atlantic city. If you consider that South Jersey, which I wouldn't because there's not much else. I mean, you know, great May, you know, unfortunately that's kind of for, from what I know, let's put it that way. I know Cape May. Uh, I mean, you can get cane delivered to South Jersey. I have a cane box coming soon. Um, I ordered some cane barley wine. So a bunch of us, the guys from no, uh, nerd sense and no hype and Keith and all that, we could do a joint, another joint bitter beer review like we did the other day and we we're going to do vengeful heart from Kane. i ordered up a box of that so they'll order you know a lot of places will ship to your house you just gotta you know pay it what it, they, they charge the same exact per price per bottle uh that they wouldn't attack us and they charge me a five dollar delivery fee it cost me more than five bucks to get there not to mention get back so yeah oh my god there's so many cans in this there's a box in a box. Should I take the box out of the box in the box? No. Fuck that. I'm going to get goddamn packing peanuts everywhere. Some bitch. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay, there we go. There's nothing over there. There's nothing over there. Okay, now we're getting into some serious candom over here. Oh. Oh, ho, Next we have up a little bit of Why Way to Heaven. Yeah, a little Revolution Brewing Company up here. It is a part of their Barrel Age series. We got Rye Aged Ale. Uh, Rye Ale Asian Rye Burn Barrels. 15.8%. So session beers for sure. And this was canned in November. Goddamn. Goddamn. Yeah. Revolution's Barrel Program is just beyond, beyond joking. This. And we have... Mineshaft Gap, which is a barley wine, ale, Asian cognac barrels. Cognac barrels, one of my favorite barrels of all time. Fuck yeah. 
There you go. Look at that. I love the revolution. Did you get these, Steven? Did you get these uh you get these uh off the shelf by you? I wonder if it's a shelf. Yeah, it probably is. Uh Dickies, what's going on, brother? Hates boys, what's going on, guys? Miss you, buddy. I miss you too, dude. It's the COVIDs. We gotta well the COVIDs. Once the COVID's over, I'll have a baby, so that makes it even harder, but I'll figure it out. We need to hang, we need the chunks and beers. <laughs> oh, listen. Uh, Ace is asking me what I think of the boss getting a DUI in New Jersey. And he's talking about Bruce Springsteen. That's bullshit. Total bullshit. So to, for those that don't know, uh, Bruce Springsteen was riding his motorcycle and down like the, the boulevard of some, I forget where in Jersey, but it was like, it's, it's, it's like along the, the coastline. And, you know, it's right before it's getting cold. So there's people out and about just kind of hanging out and doing all kinds of fun stuff. I just realized I have Thomas Open's kind of logo on my corner. I get that shit out of here before I get banned. Um, but anyway, um, there we go. That's better. Anyway, uh, he was like, he kind of was driving down and people like kind of like, hey, he kind of flagged him down. And he stopped and he was just like, hey, what's going on? And they're like, oh, holy shit, you're uh, Bruce Springsteen. He's like, yeah, hanging out, chat, 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 chat. And they're hanging out, drinking and having fun. And they're like, here, do a shot with us. Do a shot with us. He's like, sure. He did a shot while well, like sitting on his bike, like leaning on his bike. And he's chatted up, chatted up. And he's like, okay, guys, see you later. Thank you very much for, for, for enjoying the music. Drive off, cops blow him over. We saw you drinking. Made him blow on her fucking breathalyzer. He blew 0.02. A 0.02, which is like you have to be, if you're 0.07, you get off. Like he's like not even close. And they gave him a fucking DUI. Now they gave him a DUI, I'm assuming, because you're not allowed to drink while you're on your vehicle, while you're in your vehicle in New Jersey. I'm assuming that's why they hit him. But that's just some cop who's like wife or boyfriend or whoever cheated on him the night before and is just looking to take it out on somebody. That's all that is. That's, you know, or somebody's like, look at me, man. I'm going to fucking go get Bruce Springsteen. Fuck that guy. You know what I mean? Because he's sad about his life. You know, so fuck that shit. Yeah. It's dumb. Anyway. Joe Joe Cider saying cheers, dude. Going to Treehouse from on Friday. Man, it's been so long since I've been to Treehouse. God damn. Uh, thank you. What's your favorite hazy IPA brewery a company and name of beer, please. Uh, who wants to say Fox Farm? Fox Farm. Um, no, I mean, there's there's some really good hazies out there. I'll tell you what, right now, the best double IPA, the best hazy IPA I've ever had in my life is not made in the United States. It's made in England. It's made by a company called Verdant, and the name of the beer is called Putty. Um, you can go look at my review of that. I went bonkers on it. And uh, But in the States, I mean, Fox Farm, Hill Farmstead, I mean, even Treehouse. Um, I know I am missing somebody when it comes to Oh Hot Butcher. Does great hazies. Um, there's some breweries that I just don't really go gaga for their hazies too. If you want to go the other direction, like I've never been a huge monkish guy, um, and uh, you know I've really always enjoyed Trillium, but for some reason as of late I've given this big carbonic thing. Speaking of that, like uh, foam, love foam hazies, but don't like them at uh, but don't like them in cans. Like I'm at the brewery, same thing. Um, Dancing gnome. You know what I mean? Like it, it depends on the beer. So yeah, uh, or brewery, I should say. Michael Bernardo, look at look at this couple two tree beers. Cheers, bud. What's going on? Mike, me and Mike hooked up on uh, on Saturday, exchanging some beers. Uh, some of them did show up unexpectedly at one big store in Massachusetts. He's talking about the Revolution Barrel Age beers here, uh, but I actually uh, had a buddy up in Chicago pick them up and send them to me. Um, they may be the one brewery I'm willing to jump through hoops for. That barrel aged product is so good, dude. Yeah, and that's what I thought total BS about the old Bruce Springsteen. Hey, looking forward to having you be part of my class in a couple weeks. Oh, Dan. So Dan um, is a teacher out west, and he's doing a seminar kind of online um, to kind of talk about um, social media, I believe it was beer. I, I forget the no, – I forget because baby time. And I'm supposed to go on his live stream and uh, kind of talk um, about such things. But my baby, I got a baby. Uh, two weeks today, two actually less than two weeks. Thirteen days today is my wife's due date. So unless my dear, unless she, you know, goes into labor, you know, day of or the day after or something around that time, I'll miss it. But other than that, looking forward to it, Dan. Uh, let's see, Steve's Brewing Channel. Nice to meet a fellow brewer man. Would like to carry on the conversation, but it's nearly two a.m. for me, and I have an early start tomorrow. So much love, dude. Best to chat again soon. We'll see you. And Mike Gibson says, "You seem like 
to like the Southern Swells anniversary brew. I did. I believe. There you go. And as Dan would say, beer appreciation class. Um, I did like it. Um, I believe. I have to go back and rewatch it. I reviewed it a little bit ago. And, and honestly, when Carson sends me Southern Swells, it's like a tour de for force, like a shock and awe thing to where sometimes I'm, I forget. I'm like, wait, what was that one? I know I didn't like I, no, I know I liked it because I didn't like a uh, triple shortage and that that creamsicle thing was kind of fucked up a um, <laughs> little bit. Uh, not bad tasting, but kind of fucked up. So I had to do that one. So, yeah. Yeah. Like I said, beer appreciation class coming up. That's what I love. Love the appreciation of the beer. OK, we have this 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 hot garbage right here. We'll put that garbage there. <sighs> OK. Relic. I've had stuff from Relic. I've enjoyed what I've had from Relic. This is their ninth anniversary. They're nine years old? Really? A ninth anniversary, a triple in pale ale, 10%. Mm. Dry hopped with nine different hop varieties. These triple IPAs, man. They're very, very few and far between. I find ones that dig, I dig. So hopefully that is not the case there. We got a little bit more Phantom. Um, this is New England IPA. Okay, I'm very, very excited for this one because this will be the first well, besides the stout, um, first non sour beer I have from these guys. I'm excited for that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So Steven's like, I noticed you never posted a standalone beer review for J -J -J Julius um, because I did the blind, right? I did a blind of Julius versus King Julius versus J -J Julius, I believe it was. Um, so I never did a standalone. Asylum Ale from Phantom Brewing. He's really pumping up the Phantom, guys. West Coast IPA. Now you're talking my fucking language, dude. Shit's getting serious up in here. I gotta make wrong. That's how this is going. Mm. Mr. Brownstone, English Brown ass. Jesus Christ. So it's so uh Steven sends me a bunch of sours from these guys and all starts all of a sudden starts sending me brown else. Who knows what's going on? A lot of people in New York City think Finback was has overtaken other half of best hazies. Finbacks make good beer, man. They are. That could also be boredom. Um, you know, other half been around so long. You got a blender. It's been a while since I've had a blender from New Park. Mango Peach Blender. Yeah, that'll bring me back a little bit. There's some of the first ones that uh ended up sending off. Steve. That was pretty cool. And this first time me and Steve met. We actually on my way back from uh from Hill Farmston. Uh, with Keith, uh, we actually ended up mystery beer. Um, we ended up stopping at Fox Farm, hang out, exchange some beers, all the kind of fun stuff. So that was awesome. Yeah, let's see. Luis Rivera says, Thank you once again. Didn't try to expand my beer palette from simple IPAs. I decided hazy was the way to go. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, there's so much good beer out there. One of my favorite things to do. Myself, one of my favorite things. Oh, I can bear, I can almost see through this. Oh no, that's uh, oh, okay. I thought it's got some like snowflake napkin. I was like, oh, I can see because if you look, so you can kind of see like a little bit. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna be able to cheat on that one. Not really. Um, but one of my favorite things to do with uh, if you're looking to expand your palate and just have fun, just rip beers at a mix of sixes, man. I know it's not high society shit to go to a mix of six mystery beer but you can get you can run through a bunch of different styles and 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 a lot of times stuff that hits shelves and finds itself in the mix of six especially from the craft world oh good mystery beers and that might be it that might be it i believe that is it there you go look at that god damn that my friends is what you call a beer mill um yeah from the barrel age craziness mysteries phantom up in this piece Running that whole farmstead bark bonkersness, all stout yammers, hill farmstead hazies, blenders, all that fun stuff. The mystery beers galore. Daddy is okay. Daddy is now ensconced in mystery beers. I kind of feel like I'm, I'm one of these days I'm gonna miss a beer and be like, oh dude, it was like a seventy-five Thomas Hardy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Some shit, shit like that. So let's do this. Let's get this the fuck out of the way. Okay. And there we go. Now life makes sense again. Beautiful. I hate when it, like, I feel claustrophobic when everything's over here. Um, and, uh, but yeah, 
So let's see. Um, Mike Bernardo says, uh, first time I went to other half, I panicked and was so overwhelmed. I picked up crickets. So good beer, though. That's a great beer. Um, but yeah, that's not what you go to the other half for. <laughs> and Tom Sue says, have you been hearing about significant client other half easies? And what's your opinion on it? I, I, I listen for a guy that sits on YouTube and yammers into the fucking camera. You'd think I'd have my finger on the pulse of beer. Like coolness. And I'm not, dude. I just sit in my little hermit hole down here and I talk into YouTube to you guys. So I get a lot of my information from y'all, you know? Um, and uh, I haven't heard anything about other half's shit going sideways. Now, has their shit been going sideways? I don't think so. I mean, I've had a couple of beers from them I haven't loved, um, you know, as of late, but nothing like egregiously bad or anything like that. Um, I've liked what I've had, but you also have to understand they have beer coming out of like several different places right now. You know, the original Brooklyn, um, the original Brooklyn spot, they got stuff coming out of the upstate New York and two different locations, I believe. I believe there's even beer being made at DC. I could be wrong about this, but let's say you watch this in a couple months, so a year from now, it's, it's absolutely true. And anytime you're going to, you know, when they, when they bought the brewery, um, when they bought that brewery up in Rochester, which was, uh, fuck, why can't I remember the name of that brewery? When they bought that brewery from, um, that went under, uh, in Rochester, it was kind of a turnkey thing. It's not like they bought their, their system, like their best system they could possibly buy or a system tuned to their liking. Um, they bought like a brewery that was really just mismanaged and went under. And they're like, how could we not buy this? We want to go upstate New York. It's a beautiful brewery. Might not be the best setup in the history of mankind as far as their kind of beers. When you open a brewery, you really need to figure out how you want your brewery to be set up. And, um, and you know, uh, the beers are going to have to be slightly different. You know, even if they're very, very close, they're going to be a little bit different. Um, and that, that's pretty much everywhere. You know, that's why you see a lot of breweries split up their beers. You know, like, you know, Lawson's you know, still does sip out of two roads. So carton does a bunch of beers out of two roads. They only do it at two roads. All the other stuff they do at a carton, you know, there's certain, you know, they split it up. So that way there's a level of consistency. Um, I don't think they're doing that. Other, I don't think they can do that other half. So I, let's put it this way. I still enjoy the crap out of their beers, but I'm not, I don't want to, I don't want to set it in a weird way, but I'm not you guys. I'm not, I, I have other, the only time I ever drink other half is when Keith gives it to me or when you guys send me one. I've never, I don't remember last time, last time I was other half, I was rip shit drunk out of my mind, hanging out with my buddy Brad like two years ago. So I don't even know what I was drinking. <laughs> I don't even, like, we were just, I went to Brooklyn to hang out for the night and stay at my buddy Brad's and he lived like a short train ride from other half. And so it was like one of the last places to be hit on the way home. You know what I mean? So yeah, it is what it is. But, uh, and again, it's like the over, uh, I don't know, say oversaturation, but you know, a lot more people have access. A lot more people have this, a lot more people have that. They're putting it up against other people's beers. Maybe palates change, maybe people change. If I've had, you know, the last, I mean, uh, Kyle from Brooklyn sent me a, a five stout set from other half. And I thought they're all really poopy. Like all of them were really, really poopy. But then I've had hazies that were poopy too once in a while. And then I've had other bits, but then I've had really good ones. Like I just did their, um, it was a porter they did. That was absolutely fucking bonkers good. I did it in the live stream and I just reposted the other night. Absolutely fantastic. Um, so, you know, I guess it is what it is. I don't think they're a bad brewery. Let's put it that way. Um, what's your favorite light crusher that you can get almost anywhere? Je it's fucking Jenny cream ale, baby. Uh, no, I mean, light crusher. I assume you're talking about a hazy beer. Um, if you're talking about and get anywhere, it's going to be Miller high life and Jenny cream. If you're talking about something that's hazy, oddly enough, it's so fucking delicious. The Jenny dry hop, Jenny cream ale. That shit is so fucking good. Like, so good. It gives it, it ticks all the boxes that I want to make me happy with a hazy, but it comes in at 4.5%. I can get it for less than $10 a 12-pack, and it makes me happy. Now, if you're talking, like, real, like, low ABV uh, hazy crusher, hmm. You know what one I loved was Zigmeister's Falconer. I really love that beer, especially up here. And they do a uh, statewide distro. Uh, Falconer's, uh, they're, they're Falconer, but 
every time I go to find it, I find it on the shelf now. It's at minimum three, four, or five months old. So I haven't picked it up in a while. I'm um, trying to think what else I like crusher wise. A lot of the Marlowe stuff. Like if you look at like like a lot of the Marlowe, like eager to share or those kind of stuff. If you're looking nationally or more readily available throughout the country, um I don't know, man. It's been a while since I bought like a national crusher. I'll have to look. I'll have to look. Um I mean, I don't think other has I mean, I think other has hype has died down just because of pandemic. You know, like it seemed like other half would, you know, they'd be super hype, super hype, and then they'd start to wane a little bit. So then they do like a quadruple fucking collab with Monkish and Trillium and somebody else and only make one case of it. So people freak the fuck out again. So then the hype would come back. So that definitely makes something, has something to do with it. Um, uh, Rhino Puffs to say, wanted to throw out there that they're, uh, that Tired Hands has been back throwing Street Fire recently. I've been, uh, Gaga down here in the Ardmore area. I, you know what? I'm not going to lie. I think you're kind of on to something because I've never, it's, I've never been a huge tired hands, hazy person, man. They've thrown some really good ones out there every now and then, but I've been way more of a mixed culture season kind of a tired hands person or more specifically a tap room, uh, tired hands person. Like everything I usually, whenever I drink it, tired hands, I never have a bad beer. But I've been drips and drabs, and we're talking over the past six months or so. Drips and drabs, a little bit of uh, of, uh, of of um, uh, of cans come my way via beer mails, via viewers, and every one of them has been really motherfucking good. So I could see that being the case. Uh, Steven says, "I feel like there's a uh, I feel like there's a bit of fall off in shelfies in that other half sent to dis into distribution mid early pandemic, which makes sense. We're still good, just not bonkers like I remember." Um, that's a lovely looking hole. It sure is. Thank you very much. You can thank this man, Stephen, for the beautifully well done, fantastical uh, haul. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I have not really enjoyed a lot of OH, but uh, I've had in Maryland. I can get uh, DC or uh, get DC based or some liquor stores. We'll get New York stuff. Most of the barrel aged threads of people either saying the beer was okay or drain out. Yeah, I wouldn't say drain pours. They're just super sweet. Uh, Marlowe positive outcomes is fantastic. Yeah, I'll have to keep an eye out. Did I already have that one? I don't know. So anyway, I gotta cut this short, man. This is like a fucking unboxing. It's like I'm already 45 minutes deep in. Hmm. I do a live review, but I think all these beers weren't their own. Weren't their own thing. More into their own thing. Plus, I hate it when I do like, you know, a mystery beer. If I was going to do a live mystery beer, then it's like gets lost, gets lost in here, and people won't see it. I think that's a little bit poopy. Unless you want me to. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Anyway, uh, so yeah, there you go. Fantastic fucking beer mill. Thank you very much, dude. Stephen is. Stephen is not for the lighthearted. Let's put it that way, because this is definitely. Some bonkers level shit. Let's put it that way. So thank you very much, brother. <laughs> Tom, Tom Slew's this cracker review. I wish I could, man. I don't want to do any of these beers dirty. Let's see. What do we have? I'll let Steven. If Steve if, if if Steven's still here, if he wants me to review something, tell me which one you want me to review and I'll do it right now. It could be a mystery beer, it could be any beer. Please don't pick a stout or anything like that. <laughs> but if he wants or he could say no. And if he says no, then we'll save it. He's he gets to choose because it's his. I'll give him another sixty seconds. The silence, silence is golden. I have to. Uh, well, there he is. Wonder if he caught that last part. Hopefully, he did. Maybe. He's, oh, you know what it could be. And this, I never think about this when I do these live reviews, is that he might have started from the beginning. So, like, let's say, it, like, I, let's say I started, like, I start, went live, and then, like, 10, 15 minutes later, he's like, oh, he's live, and he started watching from the beginning. So, I always assume everybody's watching in real time. Ah, ha, ha, Steven says, I'd say to do one, but I like the standalone reviews. That's right, brother. We'll do a, actually, you know what? 
should I do? I'll do a live review for you, but I won't do one of Steven's beers. How about that? Since Mike Bernardo's here, we'll do a little bit of magnify up here. So let's get this off there. And then we'll just, we'll do, we'll do a little magnify. <laughs> it's Steven's right. If he, if I post this, if I were to do a beer review in this, and he, he wants to send me a beer and he looks through my back catalog, he'll send me double. So maybe I should do all of them right now. So you send me all of them. So let's do a magnified beer. Actually, you know what? Let's do this. I'll let you guys choose. So I was going to do two beer reviews tonight. I was either going to do F New Fallen or The Real Juice Boys from Magnify. You guys get to pick. The first one of these that gets two votes. I don't want to sit around and wait that long. So we have New Fallen, which is a 6.5% um, Amarillo, Chinook, and Centennial Citra Hopped India Pale Ale from the Hop Butcher for the World. Or I can do the Real Juice Boys of New Jersey for Magnify Brewing. This is a 9.1%, right? 9.1% Imperial India Pale Ale. So you guys get to choose which one I do next. How about that? See? It's called a democracy. The higher alcohol. Oh, next one wins. We have one for New Fallen. We have one for the higher alcohol one. Uh, oh, the higher alcohol one wins. God damn it, Ace. Oh, God damn it. Okay. So this is actually given me by, um, let's see, you're, you're too late, Steven. You need to be faster on the trigger, brother. Um, I said the first, you know, first two to come in. Uh, Real Juice Boys, so it's 9.1%. Uh, it comes courtesy of my boy, Mike Bernardo, uh, met up with him on Saturday and yeah, plus this is probably cl like closer to like 55 degrees right now. So that's going to get a great review. Um, anyway, it's 9.1, man. These triple IPAs is uh, just a little too much for me. Let's get this comment off. So we get full screen goodness going on. Here we go. I dig magnify. I think they've come into their own as of late and done some pretty fun things. So I'm excited. But as you can see, that doesn't look too bad. It's a little bit dark. It's not like the darkest double, triple IPA of all time. They're rich orange gold. It's this white head on it. Actually, it looks quite nice. It doesn't look too bad. I'm kind of curious now. Excited. Do I get a date on this? The only... Oh, that smells really good. That's mango from a distance. Like all the mango. I'll tell you what. If the nose is as big as it is from this distance, then I might be, I might be happy. Oh, man. That smells really fucking good. Like, really good. That smells really good, man. That's like mango juice. Straight up mango juice. It's not overly sweet. It's going to be sweet, but it's not overly sweet. It's not going to be like this crazy sweet over-the-top kind of beer. But it really is all this mango juice. Yeah, rich, sweet. Um, it's just, I mean, there's other things to it, just other tropical fruit going on. But it's just got this great kind of mango thing going on. It just makes me think like... Just ripened mango rings, like peach rings, but mangoes and stuff like that, but not in a synthetic, like disgusting candy kind of way. Oh, I like that. There might be a little tinge of something in there green. I don't know if it's hop green or weed green or weed grassy green or scallion green, but there's something going on there. But it's a big beer. It's going to be sweet, but it's not overly sweet, at least in the nose. And there's something else going on. Dive in. 55 degrees, baby. Cheers. I like that. That's bitter. Now, that could be part and parcel with it being a little bit warmer than I usually drink them. But it has this nice bitterness to it. And it definitely goes into like a little bit of kind of like a pulling weed, unkept lawn kind of thing. But it really is that kind of mango. It's a tropical juice medley with mango being the first call out. You know what I mean? On that, on that juice box, you know, you get the juice box, the dole thing, and it's just not tropical juice. It's mango and tropical juice. It's like that kind of thing. It's like partly sunny, partly cloudy, I guess, but makes sense. And it actually has a nice mouthfeel to it. It is not overly sweet. I didn't think it was going to be. Well, there is sweetness to it. No shit, Sherlock. It's fucking 9.1%. What the fuck? It's going to be sweet. It's not cloyingly sweet, which is probably my favorite thing about the beer. And it does have that bittering. Like I said, it has that unkept lawn thing, but there's some kind of deep down inside. It has a little bit of whispers of West Coast vibes in there. A little bit. Again, that's probably part and parcel of the being a little bit warmer. But 
it's a really fun beer. It's probably one of the better beers I've had from Magnify as of late. Um, not that, like I said, at the, uh, at the beginning of the review, it's not like I don't like them. I've actually liked a lot of the stuff they put out as of late, but this one's a little bit different. I think, I think the it's like almost like a bell curve a lot of times when it comes to hazy IPA. I think it, they're very, very hard the lower the ABV is. You get easier as you get a little bit bigger. And I think they kind of crest right around eight, eight and a half percent. And then it starts to dip downward. And it starts to become a little bit more difficult um, to make them. It kind of makes sense. You know, how many people make a 5% really robust two by four to the face hazy? That's awesome. And the count them on your fingers over ones you've had over the past month or so, if you're lucky. Uh, same thing, I think, with triple IPAs. Once you get to 9, 10%, I, I think it's it, it, that ABV level separates the haves from the have nots. And I'd put this in with the haves, to be perfectly honest with you. I think it's tasty. I like it. Let's put it this way I'm going to drink this whole can. Nine, nothing says 9.1% like a Tuesday evening. Uh, I get to wake up a little bit late tomorrow. So I have to travel into Jersey before I go out. So not that that matters. Ooh, 20 minutes. Um, but yeah, there you go. I did a live review. You guys, you didn't talk me into it. I wanted to do one. So I did one. So there you go. Um, what else? Closing shots before we wrap this sucker up. That's good. I like it. I really do. Is it one of the better triple IBAs I've had? Because that's what 9.1 is. Don't tell me it's Imperial. Don't tell me it's double. Is it one of the better? Yeah, I think it is. It's a Mount Rushmore status of all time. And the reason why I say all time is because I think triple IPAs, like, they need a little bit wider berth. Because if I, if I, if I want, if I, if I whittle down to as of late, which I would in my brain go like past month or two, then it would default to yes. And I just don't want to default it to yes. So it's worthy of being in the conversation and towards the top. But the upper upper echelon ones are so skosh better for me. There you go. Um value availability, that I don't know about. Now it is magnifying. Um it can they can be had. I don't know if this is brewery only or not, Mike. Let us know what's what. Um I'm guessing you're getting this for 20 bucks. For a triple IPA, this good. I think that's kind of I hate to say it's a deal because I still think that's overpriced, but I think in today's market, in today's price point, that's kind of a deal. And leave you with it if you like, well, we like this beer, if you like your big old triple IPAs, but you want them to have a little bit of snuff to them because there's so many of these triple IPAs that almost are devoid of anything in a nose. And then when you go to drink them, they drink like a 6% IPA. This drinks like pushing 9% and it has a nice kind of big thing going on with those that, that way that mango comes off. So if you dig those tropical fruits, that mango specifically, you like that little hint, that little wink of a West Coast in the end. This does not suck. Sorry. Live reviews in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Down there if you want to talk about it. All that stuff. I'm not going to go into the rest of the spiel. Anyway, uh, we have a Michael Donahue. Trying to understand. Love the channel. I love that you love the channel, Mike. Um, and we have Disco Pie saying, I'll have a box headed your way tomorrow. Speak my language, baby. Whispering the sweet nothings into my digital ear. Like I love so much. So yeah. I'm having a baby. I can't believe I'm having a fucking baby. Jesus Christ. We're so excited. I, I say that in a very positive way. I'm not saying it like, how the fuck did this happen? My baby was planned. 100% planned. Like to the T. And uh, I'm excited, man. It's just that, you know, I'm curious to see like how it affects me doing beer reviews. You know, if I lose all interest, I've got to lose all interest in beer reviews, but probably going to definitely kick it back a notch. It'll be interesting to see kind of pump for it, but I'll still be here. Let's put it that way. I'm leaving. I'm leaving you guys. Cause I want to, I want to go mess with my PlayStation five that we we're talking about earlier. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this unboxing. Thank you very much, Steven, for sending this off. Very appreciative. Thank you for everybody for stopping by. To Tom Brady lovers, to the other half haters, to the disco pies of the world who are giving me sweet little beers in the mail. Hopefully you guys enjoy your, some beer of your own tonight. 